um, the question that's been asked is, in terms of raising our game, what's the one most significant piece that could be, that would advance this? And I think, and I'm, I, I'm saying this in a, in, a, in a library that clearly has a philosophy that we're all leaders. You know, whatever we do, we're all able and willing to make a difference. Is that we all raise our antennae about stories and actively seek those springboard stories and make sure that they are packaged for retelling. Stories are the biggest mover in advocacy. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you out there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Toronto Public Library. Um, question is about the advocacy about that. Um, the advocacy around that issue has, I mean, has seen some successes and some things that I think are really quite under, unfortunate and, and some that are, in my view, profoundly counter strategic. Um, the successes are, and, and the situation is that that Toronto is in, um, it looks as it's going into this next budget in a deficit position of dimensions that are a focus of disagreement. I mean, there isn't, there isn't, doesn't seem to be a complete consensus on what the extent of the problem is. And the city had a consultant look at all the municipally supported things to come up with some recommendations. And one of their recommendations was the reduce, reduction of the number of library locations. And one of the clear successes is that the situation has required that people think about what this means to them. And what, is ha and what happened is that a lot of people got in touch with their own elected councillors and said, this matters a lot to me. And I don't think there's a huge amount of money at stake, so, so don't, don't support that. And what was very interesting was that, I mean, this is a very f fractious council, and the vote was... Um, it was quite interesting one and, and you know quite localized but I mean this is a mayor with a substantial mandate um, for for change but a mandate to eliminate what was characterized as gravy so a lot of councillors who had been of a same frame of mind as the mayor parted company with him on that issue said they were not going to vote in support of that because, uh, because it, it, it would damage something that was important to them, that they, they thought was an important use of their tax dollars. Another thing that was uh, mostly useful and mostly successful is that uh, someone who did not work for the library, did not earn her living in the library, Margaret Atwood, very prominent author, got involved in it as an advocate. She has a huge following on Twitter, created a lot of awareness. And... Uh, fortunately, I think, had the grace and the maturity to st start tweeting when the discussion got really overheated that the mayor and the mayor's brother were not stupid. So here's the downside of the campaign. I mean, what these campaigns need, in my view, is citizen activity, ad advocacy. Whenever a group of people who are employed by an institution are seen as the leaders of the advocacy, there is always the perception of self-interest. And perceived self-interest in a society that can be pretty darn cynical about self-interest, selectively so, but cynical, is a bad thing. And in, in public education in Ontario, we have a great citizen activist who started a group called People for Education. Her name is Annie Kidder. And she's, she's a mom. 
and would people for education are regarded as as an independent advocacy group they do a lot of good work uh, and they do their work is automatically more credible even if they say the same thing as the teachers federation because teachers federation utterances are regarded or are at risk of being regarded as self-interest and the other unfortunate thing that i think is just i mean this is just I'm trying to think of a synonym for idiotic. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it is idiotic to take a public position on something by ridiculing an elected official, by trying to ridicule or humiliate an elected official. Uh, particularly if you are in the library business, and here's why. Public library advocacy is a big tent. People of all kinds of political stripes coexist in the big tent. You can find lots of so-called right-wing people who believe public libraries are really important, and you can find lots of left-wing people, and a lot of people in the middle. You should never do advocacy that reduces the size of the tent. What you're trying to do is grow the tent. So what you're trying to do is appeal to the values and priorities of decision makers. And ridiculing people about whether they would recognize Margaret Atwood on the street. I mean, all that stuff and all of that online chit chat about how stupid they are not to know how many Tim Hortons in public libraries are. I mean, that, that creates uh, opponents where you least need opponents. So some of the advocacy, I think probably in the rush, was less disciplined, less careful, but again, this, um, you throw things out into a universe and you can't control them, and that's, you know, that, that's, that's part of it. Um, where the library is now is still in a really tough, tough spot in which its budget reduction figure is actually higher than the budget reduction uh, percentages of some other services. And if you put all your advocacy behind the no reduction of locations, you leave the flank of death by reduction in hours open, that's actually a lot more expensive for a library. You have, to, you have to reduce a huge number of hours to make really big savings. And when you think about the collections and services available there that are just shuttered, it's, it's just very sad. Sorry, that's probably a longer answer than it does. That's Um, to to come back to um, to come back to an elected body at any time who has said uh, there's going to be some pain. We're going to have to do our best job to identify reductions and find a way to deal with pain. To come back as if. With, with a message that says, we alone must be exempt from all pressures on the public dollar, uh, is, is more often will infuriate people than inspire them. So uh, these, <clears throat> these, these messages are really tough in library land. That's why it's so important that it be the people's issue, the community's issue because they own the libraries. Uh, you can't, if you are required to identify reductions, I don't think you have any choice but to identify them and truthfully, ethically, and rigorously identify the impacts of reductions. Because whether you respect another thing about our elected decision makers, you have to respect the fact that they were elected and they have the power to make the decisions because that is what we have given them. So I am not, I'm not a fan of warlike advocacy. I am not in favor of shots across the bow. Uh, I've not seen it prominently associated with much success. Harder work to do the other, but what you need are allies and that's how you gain allies. Somebody else had a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Um, I think that the, this is, you know, the, the reorganization of CLA just provides fabulous opportunities for network and learning and sharing across some fairly granular um, interests. And I think that, that there is tremendous potential to involve people from across the country, but the case needs to be put to them. And uh, I think it needs to be put to them personally. And I think that the sooner that such a network can identify stories and short publications and how-tos, the more they will, the more of that kind of thing they will inspire. Because I, uh, on the face of it, a lot of perhaps medium-sized libraries are going to say, oh, well, that's okay for the bigs, you know, they've got all these specialized people and, you know, a whole lot more strength on the bench than we have. Uh, what they need to see is the principles and the possibilities, and they'll get that through targeted communications and stories and examples, I think. And I, I, hope, that, I hope that's what happens. So I think that's the frontier, public librarianship. Um, I, I, I can't say I know a whole lot about citing new libraries. That's, um, I haven't done enough work in growing communities uh, to, be, to be doing that. Uh, we, we, are, we seem to be in, in public librarianship necessarily moving to you know, larger and multi-purpose units so that we can make life more convenient because one of our jobs is to make quality convenient and uh, to, to sometimes to co-locate with other services. But I'm, I'm afraid I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in citing, um, citing new libraries. You know, distance from existing facilities is an obvious factor. Okay, thank you.